the Deepcool Assassin 4 is definitely an outstanding air cooler, no doubts there. But what if you don't want to go with that no front facing fan design, but you still want to have that deep cool elegance and performance to some degree? This is the Deepcool AK620 Zero Dock, Deepcool's latest regular dual tower dual fan cooler. The AK620 exists in multiple versions, a white and another similarly shaped one but with a little monitor on top. For today however we will only focus on the Zero Dark which is exactly as you would expect, zero color. It comes in the usual deep cool style box, a high quality packaging containing the heatsink, two fans, mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, some thermal paste and a 1 to 2 PVM splitter to combine the fans. Standing on the table the all black heatsink measures 160 mm in height, so it still counts as relatively compatible with the average mid tower case. In the bottom we got the usual deep cool style base, a 39.4 by 41.7 mm nickel plated base with 6 6 mm heat pipes traveling up the 49 all black fins until reaching the two heatsink covers, which are obviously not black because somebody didn't read the memo. The two fans that come included with the Dark Zero are unnamed in-house made 120 mm fans which are actually quite nice. They are spinning at up to 1850 rpm whilst pushing up to 68.99 cfm at up to 2.19 mm of h2o and yelling up up to 28 dba. The corner of the fans are covered in a giant piece of rubber for additional vibration absorption and even if the default setting allows for only 33 mm high RAM, because the right one is you know, definitely protruding over the RAM, you are able to move it up thanks to Deepcool relying on fan clips. And voila, no matter how high your RAM is, it will always fit. The fan blade design is also quite interesting. We got 9 heavily bent wings a bit like an A12 Fesk, but spinning counterclockwise. To install the cooler, it's the exact same process as we saw in the Assassin 4. For AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the AMD labeled screws. From there, we need to take the AMD brackets and position them in an inwards pointing position and screw them down using the thumb screws. Over an Intel, we need to take and adjust the appropriate backplate according to your socket and the brackets and position them in an inwards pointing position and then screw everything down using the thumb screws. From there thermal paste, screw it down using the allen wrench and connect everything. And now let's take a closer look at the benchmarks. We benchmarked the cooler on our standardized benchmark machine featuring a 3900K with three different presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. At 120 watts, which would be the most accurate for gaming type workloads, the AK620 Zero Dark managed to keep the CPU at 33.5 degrees C, which is an excellent result. Sure, it's behind things like the Dark Rock 5 series and naturally is also behind the deep cool assessor 4, no shocking revelation there, but considering it's a 6 heat pipe dual tower, it's pretty good. It performs exactly like the Nokia NHD 15 and managed to beat a couple of other similarly sized and equipped coolers. Pretty good so far. By slowly lowering the fan speed in 10% steps and noting down the noise and temperature, we create these noise to performance graphs. At 120 watts, the 620 performs okay. It's definitely not a chart topper, but it is quite close to our chart toppers like the NHG15. Interesting to see however was the difference between the AK620 and Assassin 4 because it isn't as big as we expected it to be. Sure the Assassin is better, no doubts there, but not by that much once the fans produced the same amount of noise. Pushing the load up to 250 watts made the AK620 fall slightly behind its previous spot. At 65.3 degrees C above ambient it is still an excellent air cool considering what it is, but now it started to fall behind things like the NHD15 or Thermalright Peerless Assassin 120SE. The noise to performance ratio looks more interesting this time around. At 250 watts, the difference between the AK620 and Assassin 4 becomes indistinguishable once both produce the same amount of noise. Seems to me like the additional heat pipe of the Assassin 4 doesn't give it any advantage once the heat cannot be dissipated 
dissipated. Compared to other coolers, it's roughly where it was before. Even the slight win against the NHD15 in extremely low fan speeds remained. Slightly shocking was that the AK620 managed to survive 320 watts going through the socket. Not at all recommendable, but doable. However, remember the difference between survive and cool down. Where the assassin is actually cooling something across multiple fan speeds, the AK620 gives up when doing anything other than fan absolute burst performance. So performance wise, it's an absolutely solid cooler, comparable to a Nokia NHD15, but with slightly louder fans, or like a minimally weaker version of the Assassin 4. And in that regards, I did kinda expect a, a bigger difference between the two. Sure, the Assassin 4 is really really good on its own and looks interesting as hell, but I would have expected that the AK620 would be like 5 or 10% behind the Assassin 4. Not like a tiny bit. Other than that, the cooler definitely feels solid, upper shelf build quality. It's not the Assassin 4, of course not, but I would compare it to an NHG 15 without a doubt. I just don't particularly enjoy top covers myself. For the design, it's an all black with a tiny touch of deep cool logo, generally very well implemented. And as a standalone cooler, definitely recommendable for higher end CPUs. Not an R9 or i9 but everything below which would mostly be used for gaming this would be fine for that and it won't be noticeably loud but what about the price right now i can get one of these for 73 74 euros which is an okay price considering where it stands on the charts it's acceptable when comparing to for example a be quiet dark rock or noctua nhd 15 but okay, for today, this is going to be it for Deepcool and their AK620 Dark Zero, which isn't that dark after all. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG Poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it'll also serve to repaint the spot that one Deepcool employee screwed up. Zero means zero. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Deep Cool Assassin 4. It's like the Zero Dark, but a tiny bit better. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.